A second WA beach will look at installing environmentally friendly shark barriers to protect swimmers. The city of Wanneroo will be just the second beach in Australia to do so following a four month trial. A great white has been spotted at a Perth beach on the first day of shark patrols. The sighting forced swimmers out of the water for more than an hour. Gracetown Beach is closed again tonight after three young surfers were left terrified by a close call with a shark. One was struck by a three and a half metre great... The father of a teenage girl who narrowly escaped a great white yesterday is pushing for the shark to be killed. Good evening. Two surfers have been injured in twin shark attacks in the southwest. Both bitten by what's thought to have been a great white. Champion bodyboarder has told how he fought off a shark near Mandra. The young bodyboarder is recovering in hospital after he was bitten by a shark. The carcass that attracted a massive great white into waters off Rottnest yesterday has drifted to Scarborough a Beach. A shark detector will be installed at the Esperance Beach where 17 year old surfer Letitia Brow was attacked and the killed by a suspected The shark was hooked on drum lines of Falcon A woman and has out. been killed in another shark attack, the second in just been six more days. more shark warnings in the southwest today, a day after the latest fatal attack at Gracetown. The victim of the attack has been identified as Chris Boyd. He was 35 years old and a father of two. Alright. Yeah, so we're just driving down to Ellensbrook Beach now. Um, where in 2013 Chris Boyd was taken. Boyd, um, probably one of the most popular surf spots down here. Uh, my name is Voltaire. I've been surfing for around 10 years. Started at the age of 11 down here in Margaret River, Western Australia. And yeah, it's a pretty broad surfing community down here. We all, all of us surf probably once a day or three times a day. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's Brad. Um, I've um, been surfing around here for about 30 years and involved with the Margaret Board Riders for similar amount of time. Um, I'm a firefighter. Um, yeah, just love going surfing in the ocean. Yeah. I was born in Fremantle. I, grew, I kind of grew up for age and then moved down here um, Yeah, when I was a bit older. But yeah, been down here for years. So, yeah. First surf ever was at Kilkarna where I learned in Rivermouth. Rivermouth was the main spot I learned on foamies and then grew up surfing smaller waves like grunters and stuff and then slowly progressed. Once at Gas Bay during Surf Academy at school. Yeah. I think it was just a small reef shark, but half of its mouth came out of the water. I think it was trying to get a fish. Um, yeah, lots actually. <laughs> yeah, been a few. There's, there's a lot around. But, you know, like some of them have only been bronze whalers and stuff, which are pretty mellow. But yeah, you, you, it's hard to tell actually when you're in the surf what they are. But yeah, had a few. Yeah, they're a bit yeah. scary, very scary. Certainly make you paddle in. Well, we had one at Redgate. We were out. We went out one day just for a surf. It was a horrible day and windy, and we went out for a surf. And um, we were, there was four of us. And we uh, shark came in with one of the younger guys. One <coughs> kind of uh, he went to catch a wave, and the shark followed him right behind him and caught the wave. And we all saw it and shed ourselves and went in. And we were like, holy dolly. And uh, yeah, we got on the beach and then we're like, shit, we'd only just paddled out. And everyone's like, oh, well, it's, it was probably only a bronzy, it's gone, should we go back out? And everyone's like, no, I'm not going out, I'm not going out. And my other mate says, yeah, we'll go out, we'll just wait like 20 minutes. So we went back out and um, within about five minutes, we were out sitting there, my mate just caught a wave and I was sitting there and all of a sudden I saw the shark coming back straight for me again. And I was like, holy shit. And it went right under me. I could put my hand down and touched it, and I just like put my feet up and paddled and caught a wave straight in, just going shit. shit. So yeah, it's kind of that was probably pretty gnarly. Probably shouldn't have gone back out on hindsight, but you know we usually think that the sharks are cruising past and keep going. After half an hour, you thought it might have been gone, but no. <laughs> Thank you.
My name is Katrina Love. I'm the um, National Vice President for the Animal Justice Party and also the State Convener in WA. Been uh, involved with them since 2013. Um, we got quite involved in the 2014-15 uh, Barnett Shark Cull in the No, no WA Shark Cull project. Uh, I went out on the, the boats a few times um, throughout some of that cull and witnessed um, four tiger sharks actually being um, slaughtered. <laughs> uh, so, you know, our party represents uh, the rights and the interests of animals, that's all we do. We, have, of course, don't dismiss the rights and interests of, the, of humans, but um, that's our main focus, is keeping it on the non-human animals, and that's why we're... Many, many years ago, probably three decades ago, uh, I was actually fishing off a rock platform in Sydney and a uh, think it was a great white just stuck its head out of the water and kind of eyeballed us all and then went back off. But that's my closest uh, encounter with a shark. I've never dived with it. Yeah, just been involved with the board riders there. There's a few. There's Boydy was one of one of the club members for a while, and then uh, Brad Smith, one of the earlier ones. I knew him. I didn't know them like really well, but I you knew them as friends and stuff. And um, and Sean that got, uh, from that got bitten at Esperance that lost his arms. You know, like they're all. You know, when they happen, they're just terrible. It doesn't matter uh, if you know them really well or not. They're just when you're in that community, they just scare you. So and they're just terrible. Oh, for sure, yeah. And our board riders um, with Boydie was, yeah, they were devastated. A lot of people were so close to him. Um, the Brad Smith one, you know, like their family were um, very supportive of our board riders. We had a Brad Smith Memorial Trophy in our club for years, which, you know, we gave to our, one of our best juniors every year. So, it, yeah, it is. It's terrible. And, you know, they built a shelter up at the left handers car park there because of him and put some money in. So, it's, it's terrible for the family and friends. It's, Shocking. <laughs> There's been a few fatal attacks in Gracetown, Umbies and South Point in the past years, but um, most recent one, a guy named Alex, used to work with at the Margaret Pro. Yeah. I think it was pretty bad. A large chunk out of his leg got taken, had to go to hospital. Yeah, definitely had an impact on the community as we all surfers down here and people get pretty rattled. Plus, I think there was another one that day as well. That was during the WSL event. You know, that kind of shocked the surfing world because these days everything gets put on social media and stuff like that. And they even called the event off. The Margaret River Pro has been shut down after twin shark attacks. Leading surfers are telling the world they're afraid to go in the water here. But the McGowan government is insisting it's not a problem for tourism. It's the first time the international surfing event has been cancelled and the shark fallout has left its future in doubt. Uh, I've met some through the No WA Shark Cull um, campaign, you know, um the woman whose name I can't remember, who became very involved after her, uh, her son was taken by a shark. Uh, and I know a lot of people that dive with them and swim with them and um, you know, have a, have, all of them have great respect for them. I'm sure it's terrifying to have one of your own um, you know, taken or have a, a lethal interaction with a shark that ends, you know, um, ends in death for that person, whether it's death by shark or death by blood loss or heart attack or whatever. Uh, but I think many of the people who have been um, lethally wounded or have a lethal interaction with sharks of any species, it often could have been avoided. So we're very sad for their families, we're sad for their communities, but I think um, 
most of the people we're aware of wouldn't have wanted us to go out and then start massacring sharks as a revenge you know, attack or trying to mitigate the problem because A, you're never getting the target shark or very rarely getting the target shark and uh, B, you're just creating you know, more, more blood in the water really. Perth and Fremantle are so close to the coast uh, I think most people that live in the urban areas of Western Australia uh, recreate in the water a lot, so I think their, their opinion is just as valuable. We're just asking one question, it's just what your opinion is on shark coming. Uh, I think it doesn't really solve the perceived problem. People go into the water, it's their own risk that they take. Yeah, I, I don't think it's a very good idea. Why should they get killed? Why should they get killed if they're on, in their own habitat? I think it's stupid. Um, we are only humans. It's, it's not good to choice if the life is good or not. That's a really good answer. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, so we're just asking the same question for everyone. It's just your thoughts on shark coming. Whether you think you agree with it, disagree? Um, I do to a point. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think I'm for it. Why don't you like sharks? Because they eat you. They eat you. Do you think they should be killed? Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd uh, I think they should bring back shark fishing. I reckon shark culling's bad because um, the sharks need to stay in the oceans. Otherwise, if all the sharks go, then all the ecosystem gets messed up. Yeah. I reckon it's all right because um, they're killing some of the humans, and it's like they're getting out of control. Uh, yeah, I think it's okay. Yeah, like in close, I reckon. Uh, against it. Against For it. Sure. It's fully our choice to go in the water. Like their home. Oh, I don't agree with shark culling, no. It is their territory. I just think that, it's, that people need to be wise when they go into the water. About shark culling, well, we don't want people getting killed by sharks, do we? So something's got to happen. I think they're going to do drum lines on the other side of the coast this year. And that's good. The state government says installing smart drum lines off the coast of WA will cost between 50 and 75 million dollars a year, but surfers argue that will have less of an economic impact than not having them at all. Uh, my understanding is it differs in that there's a, um, uh, not a, receiver, a sender attached to the drum line, and when something's hooked on it, it, it pulls and that sends a signal to whoever's monitoring the drum lines that there is something on the line and then um, they are supposed to have a rapid response uh, rate where they go to the drum line and check out what it is, either um, you know, release it if it's a, a non-target species or um, tag it if it's a great white and tow it, I think, like a thousand metres further out to sea, which seems uh, absurd. That's my understanding of it and that will cover a very small distance off Gracetown. Yeah. We, don't, we, we never think that putting baited drum lines of any kind closer to shore and attracting sharks in is, is a good idea as far as human safety is concerned. Uh, and, and we also think there are you know, a dozen other ways to mitigate any risks um, that people might face going into the water when there are great, shark, great white sharks around. So you know, there's the repellents, um, there's not going into the water during certain high-risk periods, um, morning and evening. There's not going into the water when there are dead whale carcasses or schooling salmon around. So everything you can do to reduce your risk. And uh, the state government is, as you know, subsidising repellent devices still. Uh, the shark watch groups, uh, as they have in South Africa. So there's so many non-lethal um, shark mitigation opportunities available that should be exhausted first. Um, look, I, I think the, the, dr the smart drum lines are much better than the drum lines we had uh, during the Barnett policy, uh, but they're still, they're still going to um, hook non-target species and they're still going to inflict damage that may, be, may prevent you know, even the target species when they're released from, from uh, eating properly. So basically, at the end of this year, they're doing a new thing called smart drum lines, yeah. where they're capturing sharks but not killing them, but relocating them out shore. I think it's a good idea. Do you think that would be better than killing the sharks? Yep. Yep, I do. You know, I'm really not into killing sharks, for sure. Oh, I think it's a bit of an idealist, idealist view, like it's not really very realistic. Um, if they're not killing them, yeah. If they're just like relocating them, I guess. I don't support it if they 
do like find them and if, cull them. Yeah, if they're wasting money on it and it's not really working, I don't support it. But yeah, I reckon that's better because then sharks can stay and they don't get all killed and go extinct. And yeah, that's a good idea because they don't have to kill them. I reckon it's good because no one's dying. I like taking them out so they're not in where everyone's swimming. It's good. That is an alternative, but yeah, they'll might come in and miss the drum line next time. Yeah, as long as they're doing something, yeah. Just leave them alone. That's all. <laughs> that's how simple it is, just leave them alone. Yeah, I think that's a better idea than killing them when we're going into their kind of territory. I mean, it's a more humane alternative to dealing with it, um, as long as they're taken safely out and released without harm to them. I don't really see the problem with that. Um, yeah, possibly, yeah. I, I think, you know, like they've trialled them over east and they were, um, you know, like culling's obviously very political question, you know, things that I don't want to do it and, you know, people do say if you don't want to get eaten don't go in the water but, you know, that's like very hypocritical because people live on the land and they clear a block and kill all the animals and wildlife on their block and, and then they go and tell someone else that they can't do it, you know, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. And, um, you know, there's 200 million sharks a year killed for fin soup and whatever else all around the world, but they um, want to protest about someone trying to protect the industry in Margaretville of the tourism and the surfing and what have you. And they're not, you know, the shark smart drunk lines aren't actually killing the sharks, they're just relocating them and scaring them off. So. I think that's probably possibly a very good idea. Yeah, I've heard about the drum lines and stuff and the culling of sharks. I think it could be, I guess it could be handy to minimise the numbers of sharks in the southwest, especially around crowded beaches and stuff. But and people portray it to be like ruining the ecosystem. But I think a few sharks here and there won't affect it too much personally. But everyone has their own opinion. I don't think there's a solution to prevent them entirely, but I think the risk is so minuscule if you observe uh, all the advice from experts about when you go in the water, where you go in the water, um, observing high risk factors such as schooling salmon or dead whale carcasses. Um, there's always going to be a risk, but it's, it's much smaller than being run over by a bus you know, tomorrow. <laughs> really just that you know, humans have depleted uh, global fish stocks so, so badly that um, we don't know if there's a relationship between sharks coming in closer to shore or more interactions with the fact that their food stocks are depleting. I think more research needs to be done into that. But, you know, as a political party, we don't think there's any sustainable level of um, fishing, angling, trawling, commercial or recreational, really. Uh, <laughs> and the state that the oceans are in at the moment, we shouldn't be taking anything out of them or damaging anything into them. Or pour, pouring more stuff into them that shouldn't be there. I used to be quite relaxed down here, but because of all the shark attacks over the you know, last few years, you get, um, yeah, I'll, for a while there I wouldn't even surf by myself. Now I probably will, some places that are, but um, yeah, it's definitely got in the back of your mind a lot more now. There's a lot more sharks around. Yeah. Everyone, there's hundreds of people surfing in the southwest each day and, you know, can't really do much besides not surf, I guess. <laughs>